today I'm going to be going over a complete tank maintenance day, and this one really, really needs it. Duckweed can get very, very annoying, and it's also hard to take out if you have a bunch of babies in the tank. What I like to do is just kind of swash it around a little bit the best I can and take it out. I'm going to take out some of the algae. The shrimp do eat this, but I really don't want quite this much. I went ahead and threw some food in to try to get them away from the area that I want to be working in. Um, it's also to get them off the filters because I have to do some filter cleanings too. When I'm doing gravel vacs, I try to be just as careful as I possibly can. I did notice during this video that there was a couple of babies that I almost sucked up, but I didn't. A lot of the times, as long as you put the tube down in an area, uh, if, the, if the shrimp start to get sucked towards it, they'll kind of jump back. I've noticed that quite a bit, no matter how small they are. I will leave a link in the description below for this specific gravel vac. It's made by Python. It's one of their nano, uh, really long and thin versions. It works really good for shrimp tanks. I'm gonna take out about a gallon or two of water, just enough so I can clean off my sponge filters. And what I've done is I, I had an old shrimp net that kind of got bent and beat up, so I took the netting off it and kind of zip tied it on the end just so I can not suck up any of the shrimp. I love these specific sponges just because they have a lot of surface area for those shrimp to graze on. And the only downside to them is like, Right now, I've got to sit here and kind of flick all of these shrimp off of this giant sponge filter. It does get a little bit tedious, but once again, I, I don't think I could use any other sponge filter. Most of my sponges do get a lot of green algae on the top of them. And when that happens, all I really do when I clean them is I try to scrape off as much as I can, and then I will flip the sponge upside down and put the algae side towards the bottom and what that does is it kills the algae because it's no longer getting light the sponges i'm using in this tank are hydro fives they are rated up to 125 gallons i really don't think that they could handle that i'm not saying they can't but i do have a couple in this tank and over filtration is always better When I was getting my RO water ready, I noticed that the tank to the left here, which is my pinto tank, is doing its happy dance. And that means that the males are trying to find a female. It's pretty neat to watch and you can kind of see him doing that throughout this video. But back to the water change. First, I'm gonna need some shrimp salt. And what I'm using is shrimp mineral GHKH plus. Be sure this is for neocardina. There's a couple of different kinds, and I think there's a lot more than that, but all I carry is two. TDS from my RO water has been pretty consistent. It's sitting at a three, and that's just about perfect. I'll add a couple of drops of prime per gallon to all of my water changes, just in case my RO unit decided to let some kind of chlorine or something else through. Now that I'm gonna add the salts, I already know that two scoops for three gallons of water gives me about a 230 to a 240 TDS. That's what I'm looking for. I am gonna give it a quick stir. This is already set to room temperature, so when this is done, I can just add it to the tank. I did used to drip acclimate all of my tanks, but the longer I've been keeping shrimp and the more I started to realize that my tanks are very large, 
doing just kind of a dump of four or five gallons of water and 25 gallons of water really doesn't change the parameters that much. So that is what I've been doing for a very long time is just basically dumping the water in. I need to clean the glass in this tank so I can take videos and pictures of it. And all I really use is a razor blade. But what I like to do is clean my hands off in really, really hot water before I shove my hands in any of my tanks. I don't use any soaps of any kind. I really do think that just some really hot water and a good maybe a minute or two under the tap is good enough. These cherry shrimp have a lot of potential. And I'm going to try to bring these up to a hopefully painted fire red one day. I have some that are really, really red. They look really nice, but I also have quite a few that are not. And this tank needs to be cold pretty bad. That's why next week I'm going to be doing a complete video on culling my Neo Caradina tanks. Now that the tank is cleaned up, I can see my shrimp a little bit better. I do notice that they are getting back to their really patterns and I'm losing a little bit of the red. These need to be cold. I do have a cold tank that I put most of my shrimp in. I will sell some of these off as lower grade cherries. And this girl right here is just packed full of babies. You can see the eyes in there. It's really neat. But I think that's going to be it for this video. I'm going to leave you with my cherry tank. Next week, like I said, is going to be a complete coal on my Neo Cardenas. I hope to see you then. Have a good day and cheers.